this review will appropriately commence with a well-deserved commendation of the author of the book, the highly respected former Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Professor Isa Ali Ibrahim Bantami, for producing a simple but beautifully crafted part memoir, part autobiography, aptly titled A Scholar's Soldier, A Scholar's Journey, Navigating Academia, published by Ibadan University Press. The author has shown capital courage and determination in navigating the intricacies of life worthy of being recorded and presented as a book. I must thank him also for extending an invitation to me to serve as the reviewer of the book at a gallery such as this, comprising eminent personalities of elder statesmen, revered technocrats, respected IT gurus, academics, royal fathers, religious leaders, and opinion molders, all under the chairmanship of one of Nigeria's most admired and respected governors and leaders, that is Professor Babagana Zulu of Borno State. The title of the book carries in it two critical conceptual words, scholar and navigator. Scholar, according to the Oxford Dictionary, refers to a person who knows a lot about a particular subject because they have studied in detail. A scholar is also defined as a specialist in a particular branch of study, especially the humanities. Anyone who knows Professor Pantemi will find no difficulty in labeling him a scholar. Nobody doubts his credentials as an influential Islamic scholar. Nobody in governance, academia, or the industry doubts the scholarly credentials of Professor Pantani in the broad discipline of computing, especially the area of cyber security. Hence, the first segment of this book, A Scholar's Journey, is very appropriate. Mr. Chairman, sir, two contending but complementary threads are dominant in the spatial temporal dimensions of this book. Both threads are inoperably related to the general and technical preoccupation of a scholar. The first thread, which is more dominant than the second, revolves around the exemplary academic life of the author, who is himself one of the most accomplished public servants in our country. In his exemplary life in public service, first as the DG of NIDA, and later as Nigeria's first Minister of Digital Economy, you will find adequate basis for defining the basic constituents of the ideal academic in government, or a multifaceted scholar in national political space. The second major strand in the book, which conflicts with the first, stimulates the scholar's primary desire to help, to encourage, 
and empower the younger colleagues to succeed in their careers. In the book, Professor Fantemi clearly emerges as one scholar who is committed to helping his mentees to achieve greater successes. The two strands, that is scholarship and mentorship, are so intertwined that in most parts of the book, they become totally inseparable. Let me, at this point, state without any iota of self-contradiction that the two major concerns of the book find a confluence in the life and character of the author in whose honor we assemble here today. Professor Fantemi is a respected scholar in the Islamic and Western senses of the term. He is also a mentor in traditional and modern religious and secular as well as general and specific senses of mentorship. As a mark of the book's quality and the intellectual prowess of the author, two insightful forwards reinforce the book. The first forward, written by Professor A.S. Sambo, the Vice Chancellor of ATBU, when Isa Ali, Isa Ali Ibrahim Fantemi secured his first appointment in the university, describes the book as both a combination of the trajectory of Professor Ali Fantemi's phenomenal rise to academic stardom and a collection of the various academic outputs, publications, and masterships through teaching, research, and community service across diverse platforms in different parts of the world. In recommending the book to the general public, Professor Sambo describes the publication as a source of inspiration and as an academic piece valuable enough to instigate transformation of the academic careers of young and emerging academics and as a source of original knowledge in the communications and digital science and technology space. The second forward is written by Professor Mike Henchi, a respected scholar of software engineering at the University of Limerick, Republic of Ireland. According to him, a scholar's journey is a fascinating read, especially if you have had the opportunity and pleasure to know or work with Professor Isa Ali Ibrahim. It is part memoir, part curriculum vitae, and part manifesto of a highly effective leader, government official, and true scholar. I humbly admonish distinguished ladies and gentlemen that it would be a most rewarding enterprise for would-be readers of this book to pour over the two forwards before setting or settling in for the main menu, as there is a chance of an incredible loss in carcerally scheming through these important inputs in the book. The book itself comprises 17 chapters, organically arranged in a linear chronological order in terms of its structural and thematic concerns. The first chapter is preceded by a beautifully written citation of the author, serving as the abstract of the entire book. This first chapter is entitled Introduction and clearly maps out the concerns, scope, and justification of the author in embarking on the journey of recollecting and documenting the key events in the academic life of the author. Professor Fantemi insists that being young and still active 
he has had no desire for embarking on this noble project, but for the pressure mounted on him to do so in order to serve as a mentoring guide to the younger generation of academics and professionals who may find some blueprints for a more successful career for them. In his own words, and I'm quoting, I'm writing about my academic journey because I have been urged to share my life experiences, achievements, and the challenges I have faced to serve as an instrument of learning and mentorship for the upcoming generation. This is because writing tends to influence more people. And to achieve this through this book, we can say that we have created a mentorship instrument that can outlive us. The chapter then cites a good example of a successful mentorship of Gates versus Warren Buffett, which is well known to most of you who are uh, leaders in business and so on. And he references this to that beautiful book, Business Adventures, 12 Classic Tales from the World of Wall Street, which Warren recommended uh, Bill Gates to read. The chapter then offers an overview of the rest of the book, serving as a kind of orientation to the entire publication. Chapter two focuses on the author's first public appointment after graduating from ATBU, Abubakar Tafa Walewa University in Bauchi. In a beautiful narration, the chapter reviews the when, how, why, and who facilitated his appointment, first as a programmer, and then later as a graduate assistant. The author attributes his successes at this level of his development to his strong sense of service and sacrifice, as well as his ability to relate responsibly with peers and teachers and mentors. This phase of my career, according to him, provided a solid foundation at the university provided the theoretical knowledge I gained as a student. Chapter three discusses the author's transfer to the academic cadre from the position of programmer in the university's computer center. The first three years of his experience as a young academic here have been quite eventful. In spite of a few frustrations related to the unfortunate delays in commencing the MSc degree in the university for no fault of his, but for what many of us who have been in the system are aware, there were the exciting opportunities of visiting some famous universities in Egypt and Malaysia, as well as deserved promotion to higher grades in the university following his successful completion of the MSc degree. It was also during this period that young Pantami's mentoring skills were tested and resulted in saving the careers of many students who were frustrated by the dangerous ideology of Islamic extremism. According to the author, one of my biggest achievements and greatest source of joy was the opportunity to provide mentorship to students and the responsibility I got and the acceptability I got from those being mentored. This was one of my biggest achievements in the, academic, in the academia. It gave me great pleasure to watch out for the younger generation and mentor them on the necessities of life. Chapter 4 reviews the author's progression on the academic ladder, beginning with the upgrade to a lecturer grade, the lecturer proper. Chapter 5 dwells on the experiences acquired 
during the process of acquiring, obtaining the PhD degree in Scotland between, uh, from 2014, 2010 to 2014. In my view, anyone interested in acquiring a good PhD will benefit tremendously from the author's detailed explanations of the process, the nature, the structure involved in writing and defending a successful PhD. Chapter 6 chronicles the beautiful experiences of the author at the Islamic University in Medina, where he worked as a teacher, researcher, translator, and mentor. Chapter 7 provides the background and detailed explanations behind the author's appointment as Nigeria's chief information technology officer in the year 2016. The chapter captures the mandate, functions, and essence of NIDA as an important agency of the federal government. More importantly, the chapter chronicles the reforms introduced by the DG to revitalize, re-engineer, and reinvigorate the agency, especially in relation to relevant centers of academic and intellectual activities in the country. It was during the author's tenure as the DG of NIDA that the agency came very close to universities in Nigeria and outside Nigeria. Chapter 8 highlights the strategic importance of the author's appointment as the champion of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology through the REAP. One of the highlights of the activities of the author in this role is the promotion of a seamless and robust partnership with academia. This is a good foundation for making the triple helix model to work in Nigeria. Chapter 9 is the largest and the longest and probably the most important chapter from the point of view of the author's commitment to enhancing his reputation as an academic in government and from the view of his desire to support activities in Nigeria and universities and other intellectual centers. The chapter explains how Professor Kwantemi became communications minister, how he promotes the triple helix model to support development, how he involves academics in policy formulation, including appointment of academics into sensitive positions in the ministry and its agencies, and how he, in spite of the many challenges of his office, finds time to engage in core academic activities like research, public lectures, national and international conferences, publication of academic books and peer-reviewed papers, as well as participation in the governance structure of some universities at home and abroad, either as chancellor or as member of them. Yeah. Chapter 10 documents in detail the exciting but largely misrepresented narrative regarding the author's appointment as the first professor of cybersecurity in the Federal University of Technology, Away. Chapter 11 comments on his appointment or the appointment of the author as a visiting professor in the Federal University of Technology, MENA. Chapter 12 documents the multi-billion Naira projects and initiatives to support education and research throughout Nigeria. Some of these activities and initiatives include the establishment of digital centers to support education and stimulate research across Nigeria, the establishment of a national digital innovation and entrepreneurship center, the establishment of a national center for artificial intelligence and robotics, the establishment of a national ICT park, IT hubs, 
ICT innovation and incubation parks and digital parks and so many others. Chapter 13 focuses on the academic publications, inventions and patents of the author in the course of his sojourn as an academic in government. It is amazing that between 2018 and 2022 alone, the author published 10 well-researched academic books, as well as over 20 articles within the period in learned journals and conference proceedings. During the same period, the author also attended nearly 40 conferences in different continents of the world. Chapter 14 comments on the importance of professional memberships in the life of academics, citing his own rich harvest of fellowships and memberships of some of the most prestigious professional bodies in IT, as well as institutions like Harvard, Yale, and the Oxford. Chapter 15 is a discussion of various projects facilitated by the author and implemented by different parastatals of the Ministry of Communications and Digital Economy between the year 2019 and 2023 when the author was at the helm. Chapter 16 documents some encomiums from eminent personalities in government as well as from academia and private sector attesting to the exceptional knowledge and leadership qualities of the author. President Buhari, for example, remarks that the appointment of Fantemi was one of the best choices I have made because he has added tremendous value to good governors. There were also encomiums from the NUC and from the NUS, the Nigerian University system, where several vice chancellors sent in their commendations over the contributions of uh, the then Minister of Digital Economy to the development of the university system. There are also commendations from Professor Mike Hindley, Molly Leffin Rose, Professor John Harper, and our own respected Babatunde Fashola, son, who describes Pantemi as a brilliant and excellent scholar. Senator Momora also describes Pantemi as a forensic accountant of the Federal Executive Council. The final chapter, Mr. Chairman, chapter 17, is the concluding chapter. It provides a brief summary of the author's main motivation for writing this book. The chapter also documents some of the key lessons learned, especially for upcoming generation of academics. Mr. Chairman, sir, in the final analysis, Professor Isa Ali Ibrahim's academic autobiography is a remarkable book crafted by a highly intelligent, resourceful, dynamic, charismatic, and culturally educated public servant and academic. The book itself is fairly well written, well edited, well structured, and is reader friendly with a delightful, with a delightful technical finish. The language is simple, but dignified, logical, coherent, authoritative, and thoroughly persuasive. I wholeheartedly recommend this to anyone interested in exploring the intriguing academic life and exceptional public service of Professor Isa Ali Ibrahim Fantami, an influential Islamic scholar an effective Minister of Communication and Digital Economy, and a respected Professor of Cybersecurity. 
I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you.